I'm Coach Colin Castell here with Shot Mechanics Basketball, and today I'm going to teach you how to pass the basketball, and welcome to our dime school. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you the ins and outs of setting up your teammates and getting those easy assists. Because as a basketball player, the more you can facilitate for your teammates, the better you're going to be and the better your team's going to be. Now before I jump into it, I also want to give you a little freebie. So you can click the link down below or the button above to get a free copy of my number one scoring workout. This is going to change the way you think about your training and probably increase your scoring average overnight. So you pair that with the dime school and you're going to be an unstoppable player. All right, so let's jump right into it and learn how you can drop some dimes today. So as a passer, the very first thing that you want to be on the lookout for is what we call passing windows. And a window is basically just open space that you can fit the ball through to get it to a teammate. Now finding the windows isn't really the hard part, but knowing when to put the basketball through the windows can be a little bit difficult. So once you find a passing window, the next thing you need to do is analyze where your teammates at and where they're moving to. Many times they're probably not wide open in the passing window, and so you've got to lead them through the passing window to where you want them to go. So next you have to analyze how you're gonna throw your pass through the window. Now a lot of times this is gonna depend on where the defenders are at and how your offensive player or teammate is moving. Now one handy trick, especially when fitting it in tight windows is to throw a bounce pass that's low and bounces right by the feet of the defenders. By throwing it low through the window, it makes it really hard for the defenders to bend over and get a hand on the pass. So a lot of times you see them sneak by. Now, once you start looking for these windows, you're going to start seeing them all over the court. You're going to see them in transition. You're going to see them running your offenses off the attack dribble drive. But a lot of times you're going to see them a ton out of a pick and roll. And that's really one reason why pick and rolls can be so devastating is because many times coming out of it, you're going to have multiple passing windows to work with. And the more windows you have, the more likely you are to make a play and get that assist. All right, so remember, key number one is to locate those passing windows. Key number two is read your teammate and see if they're moving into the window. And key number three is to make sure you fit it through the window away from where the defense can get a hand on it. Now, a lot of players don't realize that your eyes are one of the most powerful tools you have in your arsenal when it comes to setting up your teammates for easy baskets. And when you use them properly, it's actually incredibly easy to manipulate the defense to give you those open looks. Now, most of the time, a look off works best when you have two offensive players and one defensive player in between them. So all you have to do is look at the player that you don't actually want to pass the ball to, and it's either going to freeze the defender or make them chase that player that you're looking at. And many times, even just a split second freeze is the difference between an open finish and none. So check out on this play. As Schroeder begins to drive, he brings his eye gaze out to the three-point line. This causes LeBron James to react and open up the passing window even more for the backdoor cut. So then all he has to do is drop it through the window and it's an easy bucket from there. So if you can always be on the lookout for that one defensive player trying to cover two offensive players, you're in a great position to use your eyes to fake them out. Now once you master this skill, it's incredible how easy it is to manipulate pretty much any defender at any point in time just by looking off the opposite direction. This is probably one of the main reasons why guys like Ricky Rubio are such phenomenal passers. And what's really cool is it doesn't take any extra athletic ability or talent to be able to do this kind of passing. You just have to use your head and think about the play as it's developing. Now, one major mistake that a lot of young players make when passing the basketball is that they're passing the ball to where their man's at, not where they're going. And because there's so much movement on a basketball court, it's really important that you're leading your teammate to that open area. That way they get a great look at the basket. So much like we talked about earlier with the passing windows, here to lead your teammate, you want to think about open spaces. And by that, I mean open areas of the floor where there are no defenders, where your teammates are running to. Many times by targeting your pass to the open space, instead of the open teammate, it's going to allow you to lead them just right so that they get a really great look at the basket. So one thing that can help is target a specific spot on the floor that you're going to throw the basketball to and just let your teammate run underneath it. Because if you can make it so your teammate doesn't have to slow down to catch the basketball, they're going to get that much better of a look. So lead your man and drop it on a spot and you should be good to go. Now, a ton of players missed assist opportunities just from holding onto the basketball too long and not making quick decisions. Because basketball is such a fast-paced game, if you can get the ball out of your hands quickly, generally that's going to set your man up better for an open look. So one thing that can help is if you get in the habit of reading the floor as the pass is coming to you. So check out on this play as the ball's being passed to Marc Gasol, his eyes are already starting to drift to see where his teammates are at. And because of that, he's able to make a quick decision as soon as the ball hits his hands, that way he catches the defense off guard. Now just this little trick alone is good enough to get you an extra two or three assists a game just by getting the ball out of your hands quickly before the defense is set or rotated. And the best part about this is that the coaches absolutely love when you make quick decisions with the basketball. Because again, like we mentioned, the faster your decision, the faster 
faster it's gonna make the defense move and the more out of position they're probably going to be. So if you train yourself to make faster decisions, not only are you gonna get more assists, but you're probably gonna get more playing time because even if you're not technically getting that stat as an assist, you're still gonna be setting up your teammates and keeping the offense moving. So work on reading your teammates as the ball's in the air coming to you and you're gonna be able to make faster decisions. All right, so next is probably one of the most overlooked things, and that's knowing your target. And by that, I mean being aware of what your teammates are good and bad at on the basketball court. So take this next play for example. As Steph Curry drives in, he notices that he has Harrison Barnes wide open in the corner. Now Harrison's a pretty good knockdown wide open three-point shooter, so this is a great opportunity for an assist. But let's say the player in that position wasn't a good three-point shooter, it'd probably be better for Curry to take the layup. So just by knowing your teammates, you can actually figure out if a pass is a good pass or a bad pass, depending on their skill set. You know, are they good at catching the ball on the run? Are they good at finishing where you're going to give it to them? Those are all things you want to think about. So let's take this next play for example. On the made free throw, Westbrook's going to take the ball out of bounds and chuck it deep down the court to Kevin Durant. Now this is a great pass because number one, Kevin Durant's super tall, so he's going to be able to go up and get it. And number two, he's also great at scoring in transition, so it's another great look. But just think of it with somebody like Anthony Roberson on this play instead of Kevin Durant, it's probably not a pass that's going to be as high reward. And so with just this tip alone, you're going to be able to not only get more assists, but also limit your turnovers. When I used to play, I used to know that there were specific players that I couldn't throw specific passes to because they just weren't going to be able to catch the ball. So although a pass may look open, if your teammate doesn't have the skill, dexterity, or hand-eye coordination to catch the basketball, it's not a good pass to make. So think about your teammate's skill, and that's going to help you out a ton in determining what passes to make. All right, if this video helped you out, go ahead and pop that like button, then head to the comment section down below and let me know what sort of video you want to see next. This is a channel for the people, by the people, and I run pretty much everything off a request, so leave it down below and hopefully I can get to it. All right, if you're new to Shot Mechanics, welcome, and don't forget to subscribe down below because we put out videos every week and they're all going to get you better, I guarantee it. And you're also going to want to get that free scoring workout I talked about earlier. Button above, link down in the description below as well because it's really going to kind of change the way you think about your training and probably increase your scoring average the very first time you use it. That's how powerful it is. Again, I'm Coach Colin Castell with Shot Mechanics Basketball. Thanks for watching, and until next time, splash on.